on, Squeaks came up with a new game for us to play. It's called Guess That Emotion. And in this game, Squeaks and I will each act like we would when we're feeling different emotions. Then we'll try to guess the emotion the other is acting out. Let's try it. I'll go first. Hmm, let me think. I got it. I'm sorry, Squeaks. I'm not actually mad at you. We're playing a game, remember? Hmm, but I guess you did technically guess what emotion I was acting out. I was pretending to be mad. Do you remember when we learned what happens when we actually get mad? Squeaks and I are making different funny faces for some photos. Let's try a really silly face. Ready? Okay, now a really sad face. Let's try a surprise face. <gasps> oh, can you guess this one? That's right, it's my angry face. Could you tell that I looked angry? There might have been some clues that gave it away. I did move my eyebrows down and I had a pretty big frown. When people feel angry, many of us have some of the same reactions. Think about the last time you were angry. Maybe you lost a game or asked for something and a grown up said no, and suddenly you start to feel a bit mad. You might clench your teeth together, your stomach might hurt a bit, and you start breathing fast. My face scrunches up, even pretending to do all those things. Anger is a really powerful emotion or feeling, and when you feel angry, your body starts to do different things all at once. Our bodies are great at taking care of us and preparing us for anything that could be seen as a threat. In other words, something that might be bad for us. When you get angry, your brain starts sending messages to the rest of the body that there might be a threat coming, even if all that happened was that you lost a game or didn't get something you wanted. But your body wants to keep you safe. Even if you're angry about something that isn't a big threat, your body starts to react as though there might be danger or a fight about to happen. Your brain sends the signals out to get angry and fast. First, putting on an angry face warns others that you're mad. Clenching your jaw and frowning are signs that tell possible threats to back off. Many other animals have special ways of showing that they're angry. Dogs growl, cats arch their backs, and apes clench their jaws and bare their teeth like us. Huh, I didn't know that. When Squeaks gets mad, he might start squeaking louder, trying to sound big and tough. Sometimes just showing that you're angry might be enough to scare off a threat. If the threat doesn't go away, and if you stay angry, your body will move on to other stages of preparation. Your body gets ready to fight. This is when you might start to feel funny because your body can take over a bit more here. Your body puts all of its energy into being ready to fight, so it stops working on things like digesting food. This can make your stomach hurt. Your eyes focus in on whatever is making you mad, noticing any changes or possible starts to a fight. Your brain even sends out messages to release adrenaline, a special chemical that can help you react more quickly, move faster, or fight harder throughout your body. In just a minute or two, you're ready to face off against any big threats. It is amazing how well our bodies work to protect us, but most of these reactions aren't needed for many of the things that make us angry from day to day. Our anger instincts are there to keep us safe if something really bad were to happen, but most of the time we don't have to fight if we're angry about something. If someone disagrees with me or I'm disappointed because I lost a game, getting into a fight isn't the right choice for me to make. It can be hard when you're feeling angry or upset to make good choices because your body is running on overdrive trying to keep you safe. But sometimes we might need to find a way to control angry feelings and instincts. Well, Squeaks, if I'm feeling angry, I try to take a few deep breaths and sometimes I'll count to 10 really slowly to give my brain and my body time to cool off before I decide what to do. I also try to make sure that I get enough to eat and plenty of sleep. When people are tired or hungry, they can get angry much faster. Maybe you can try out these tricks the next time you get angry or frustrated and see which one works for you. Oh, and Squeaks, let's try one last photo. Let's do a big cheesy smile, you ready? Okay, Squeaks, it's your turn. <laughs> That's a good one, Squeaks. Oh my gosh, I think that you are pretending to be sad. Am I right? 
Oh, it's hard to do when you're just pretending, but sometimes when we're really sad, we cry. Can you remember why that is, Squeaks? <laughs> Let's watch this video so we can remember. Oh, Squeaks, I'm sorry about your ball. I know it was your favorite. Squeaks was in the yard playing with his favorite soccer ball and he kicked it into a rock and it popped. Oh no, I don't think we're gonna be able to fix it. We could patch it, but the air would still leak out. If you want, we could buy a new one. I know, you're right. The new one won't be the same because the old one will still be popped. It's okay to be sad about it. Everybody gets sad sometimes, and crying is a natural thing that can happen when you're sad. It's actually a really important thing that our bodies do. Scientists aren't completely sure why we cry when we're sad, but they do have some guesses. One of the main reasons has to do with what crying tells other people. When I see you crying, Squeaks, I know that you're sad right away. You don't even have to tell me with words, although it does help if you do. The more I know about how you're feeling and the more you know about how I'm feeling, the better we can live together. If you're really sad or angry or having other strong feelings and I don't know about it, then I might do something insensitive without realizing it and make things worse. For example, now would not be a good time to bring out my favorite ball and go play with it in the yard. It wouldn't be a very nice thing since yours just popped. But if I didn't know you were sad, I might not realize it would be hurtful. Knowing that you're sad also means I can try and find ways to help, even if it's just by staying with you until you feel better. And remember the other day when I felt sad about the end of the book I was reading? You gave me a hug and it made me feel so much better. I'm so glad that we can show or tell what we're feeling so we can try and help each other. And that's really important outside the fort too. The whole world is a much better place when you can help people who are sad or having a hard time. Besides helping us share our feelings, scientists also think we cry when we're sad because of what's in our tears. If you taste your tears, you can tell that they're pretty salty and that's because they have salt in them. And one of the other ingredients in tears is a painkiller, something that makes pain go away. It's kind of like the medicine your doctor might give you when you're sick, except this is something that your body makes by itself. So when you cry because you're sad, your tears have something in them that can make you hurt less, even if it's just your heart that hurts. And then hopefully, when you're done crying, you start to feel a little better. Do you think you're starting to feel better? Oh, I'm so glad. And just like you're already starting to feel better now, over time, you'll feel even less sad. It's all part of understanding our feelings and the different ways we show them, including by crying. Okay, Squeaks, I got one for you. You ready? Okay. Hmm, no, I'm not cold. But sometimes you do shiver when you're cold and when you're feeling this emotion. Guess again. That's right, I was pretending to be scared. Remember that time that you were hiding in the lab and popped out and scared me? Yeah, yeah, real funny squeaks. Hi everyone, I've been looking for squeaks all morning. I know he's around here somewhere, but I can't seem to find him. Squeaks buddy, where are you? <gasps> oh, it's just you squeaks, jeez, you scared me. Apology accepted. I know you're only trying to surprise me. For a second there, when you scared me, I felt myself want to run away really quickly. And then when I realized it was just you, that feeling went away. You must have triggered my fight or flight response. Oh, well the fight or flight response is something that happens when animals like us get scared because we want to get to safety as quickly as possible. It's okay to feel scared sometimes. It happens to everyone, even grown-ups. If we're scared and our brains decide that we need to get somewhere safe quickly, there are two main things that can happen. Sometimes our brains will decide on the fight option so that we can scare away whatever is scaring us. Without really meaning to, we might suddenly feel angry and even try to fight whatever scared us. Other times, our brains will decide on the flight option. <laughs> Good guess, Squeaks, but it doesn't mean that we can fly. Flight is another way to say running away. If our brains choose flight, we might feel even more scared than before and want to run away from whatever scared us as fast as we can. For either fight or flight, we don't really make the choice ourselves. Our brains and our bodies just react without us thinking about it. It might sound strange, but our brains are trying to get us to safety quickly, so it doesn't give us time to really think about what we wanna do. Fight or flight is an instinct, something our brains and bodies do naturally without us thinking about it. It's the brain's way 
of protecting us. When we get scared, our brain sends signals all over our bodies preparing for action. It makes our heart and lungs work faster to get energy to our muscles so that we can run really quickly or fight really hard. It even makes our eyes focus better so we can see things moving more easily. Our bodies will stay in fight or flight mode until we're safe. <sighs> Oh, I am a little bit tired now, Squeaks. The fight or flight response put my body into overdrive. So many of my muscles and organs got ready to leap into action, and now I can start to feel how much energy went into that response. If your brain goes into fight or flight mode, you may not notice what's going on with your body very well. But once you realize everything's okay, your brain allows you to think clearly again, and you might notice that you're really tired, hungry, or thirsty. Whew, I sure am glad that it was only you trying to surprise me, Squeaks, and not something really scary. And I'm glad I didn't run away too too far. That's a good idea, Squeaks. Squeaks says that when we feel ourselves getting scared, it might help to take a deep breath in and then a deep breath out really slowly, like this. This can help our brains stay out of fight or flight mode so we don't feel as scared. I have an idea. Let's give it a try. I'll close my eyes and you go hide somewhere. Ready? Squeaks? Squeaks, where are you? Squeaks? <sighs> oh, that worked pretty well. I felt scared for a moment, but my breathing gave me enough time to realize that it was only you and I felt better. But just in case, let's go play something a little less scary, like chess. Okay, Squeaks, you do one more. Squeaks, are you pretending to be happy? Oh, you aren't just pretending to be happy. You really are happy. Oh, me too, buddy. And sometimes when we're really happy, we can't stop laughing. <laughs> yeah, laughing is really weird when you think about it. But we learned why we laugh once, remember? Let's watch this. <laughs> I don't know, Squeaks. Why didn't the potato cross the road? Because it's a potato and it doesn't have legs. <laughs> good joke, Squeaks. Oh, it feels good to laugh. We laugh pretty much every day. But what is laughing anyway? Why do we make this weird noise when we're happy or think something is funny? Scientists have found that we use laughter as a form of communication. Communication means talking and sending messages to each other. When we laugh, we're communicating with the world around us. It helps us connect to other people and strengthens our relationships. And even though we usually laugh without even thinking about it, it's actually kind of a complicated thing for our bodies to do. When you laugh, your body uses 15 different facial muscles and your upper lip gets turned up. Your windpipe, which you use to breathe, is partially covered up, which makes you gasp. Sometimes when you're laughing really hard, it becomes harder to breathe. So you turn red or purple and you might even get tears in your eyes too, but they're happy tears. Meanwhile, your brain gets excited and so do your arms, legs, and stomach muscles. And of course, when you laugh, you make a sound. There is a lot going on. All kinds of situations can make us laugh. Sometimes it might be silly things that don't go together, like putting a hat on a hamster. Or sometimes it might be relief because something that made us stressed or worried is finally over. Sometimes laughing can tell the people around us that we feel safe and happy with them. Or it might even be a response to being tickled. And even though funny things make us laugh, most of the time when we laugh, it's for a different reason. Usually, we're laughing at our own words. So I'm a lot more likely to laugh after saying something not too funny, like Squeaks and I went exploring today, than if Squeaks tells me a joke. Not that I don't like your jokes, Squeaks. It's nothing personal. It's science. And even though laughter feels like the sort of thing that happens suddenly and unexpectedly, it turns out that most laughter happens during natural breaks in our conversation. And people don't usually laugh when they're alone. But when you're with friends, laughter can be contagious. When people say something is contagious or catching, they're usually talking about germs, like how everyone in your class seems to get each other sick at the same time. You don't laugh because of germs, of course. But <laughs> if your friend starts laughing, you can catch their laughter. It helps you tell the people around you that you feel comfortable and want to be part of the group. So one person laughing can sometimes mean that a whole bunch of people will start laughing too. Some scientists think that a long time ago, 
Ancient humans developed the ability to laugh even before they started using words. Even then, laughing would have helped to show that we feel safe and comfortable and help connect people to each other. Making connections with people and forming groups can sometimes mean that some people get included in a group while some people feel left out, which may explain why a group of people being mean to someone can seem funny at first. Sometimes people <laughs> might feel like they want to laugh at something bad happening to someone else, but even though it can feel like you're not laughing on purpose, we always try to be careful about how we treat other people. Laughing feels great when you're using it nicely. Laughing to connect to other people is a very human activity, but some other animals do it too. Some apes have an open mouth play face, and they make a panting sound that's similar to the ha-has we make when we laugh. Even rats do something that's like laughing too. Babies who haven't learned to use words yet can also laugh, and babies and apes laugh at similar things, like playing and tickling. Have you ever heard someone say that laughter is the best medicine? That's because the best part about laughing is not just that it feels good, it's good for you. People who laugh a lot are more likely to have healthy hearts and they tend not to get sick as much. Laughing also probably means you're living a fun life and have connections with people you like, which is healthy too. And that sounds like a great reason to have a good laugh. I don't know, Squeaks. What fruit do sheep like best? <coughs> Bananas? <laughs> that is your best joke yet. Good one, Squeaks. Oh, Squeaks, that was such a fun game. I'm so glad you came up with it. And maybe you can play at home too. Thanks for joining us. If you wanna keep having fun and learning cool new games like this with me, Squeaks, Mr. Brown, and all our friends, be sure to hit the subscribe button. And we'll see you next time here at the fort.